there and welcome again to daytime. Well, if you were with us on Tuesday, you'll know that the studio was heaving with angry print workers and journalists. Today, it's the turn of passengers. And the man who should be in this hot seat was to have been Jim O'Brien, British Rail's Joint Managing Director. Well, he's decided not to be here with us to answer the findings of this report, which says that British Rail, despite the adverts, is not getting there. Well, these are the results of a government watchdog committee rejoicing in the title of a Central Transport Consultative Committee. The yellow column you see are the complaints for six months from 1984. Now, the blue represents the 1985 complaints. Timekeeping, passenger information, staff conduct, overcrowding, service suitability, and catering. But as you can see, all the complaints are up, in some cases considerably on the previous year, with the exception of a category mysteriously called suitability of service. Well, the worst moan is timekeeping, closely followed by train service quality and passenger information. Well, on the plus side, the report reminds us that British Rail potentially has a fine railway system. More passengers travelled on BR in 1985 than before, and with its new high profile, more complaints are bound to be coming in. But even the report admits that the complaints on fares and fare structures are genuine grouses. Well, it's at this point that we naturally wanted to ask British Rail to answer their critics and put their side of the story. But at the last moment, yesterday, British Rail changed their minds. And so far, we've had no satisfactory explanation as to why they won't hear your criticisms in person. But thankfully, that doesn't apply to their workers. Some of them have come in to meet the public. So thank you all very much, those of you who have come in. We'll try not to give you too rough a ride. I think we can be fairly certain that the gentlemen who ought to be sitting in, in, in that chair there and members of the BR board will be watching this programme from the safety in front of their television sets. So can I ask you all, if they had been here, or if Mr O'Brien had been here, what would you have liked to have said to him? What would you have liked to have said? Well... One complaint is catering. I have had the experience of travelling from Scotland to London on the motor rail overnight where the restaurant car was cancelled and we were offered cold drinks and biscuits at about 7 o'clock in the evening right round to breakfast when it was just coffee and horrible little pots and biscuits. Thank you very much indeed for that one. What about, let's go to the top of, top of the row there, what about the gentleman with his arms uh, folded there? What do you feel about BR? What would you have liked to have said? Well, I would like to wanted to ask the board why they're cutting back their staffing levels to the, such a level that uh, people can't cover all the uh, jobs that needs doing, like uh, the cleaning of the trains and the uh, general running of the trains. Do you have a personal interest in that? Yeah, I'm uh, a senior rail at Victoria Station. <laughs> Thank you for coming. What about you? What do you feel about British Rail? Well, I like it. I've worked for it ten years and I love it. Good for you. What do you do? I'm a carriage cleaner. Okay, well, I'm sure we'll come back and hear some things from you. Let's go over here because I'm always neglecting this area and I get nasty letters about it. What do you feel about BR? Well, as, as similar to what that gentleman said, they do their best, but they are cutting where it's unnecessary. For one thing, they want to cut the guards. Well, I think the guards safeguard passengers Lovely. and people. Thank you very much for that. And what about you? You look as if you've got a bundle of leaflets there. Well, I represent the Ashford uh, Commuter Association, and uh, we uh, leafleted just two trains to see whether passengers were happy with the service that they were being provided with by British Rail. There is some like a thousand signatures, very unhappy, and one who was happy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you very much for that. Len Dumelo, you, sir, the secretary um, of the committee that wrote this report. I won't go into the title because I'll trip over it, I know. Now, we've heard public's complaints. That they are members of the public, members of, of BR staff. Do you feel, and you and your committee have been looking at uh, British Rail Service for six months, do you feel that BR, for the amount of money they charge us for tickets, is giving us satisfactory service? Not in many parts of the railway network. We've been very concerned that complaints are rising year by year from the public about the standards which are deteriorating. And at the same time, fares are going above the rate of inflation, which is concerning my committee very much. And we have made it quite clear, very, very strongly to British Rail, that standards on trains and at stations must rise uh, to enable passengers who will have to pay a higher fare at least get value for money. Will this just go into an in-tray and gather dust? I mean, as a watchdog committee, have you got any clout at all with BR? Very much so. With the statutory body, we have a legal clout, 
And over the years, we've had considerable improvements uh, with British Rail. For example, there is now a code of conduct and a guide for customer service, which we helped British Rail to write. That guide, in fact, also includes an arbitration service for claims for compensation. We have had improvements on train catering for second class passengers, which if we hadn't have got it, then the second class passengers wouldn't have had the benefits. So it's not all bad? Not all bad. OK, thank you, Len. I'm sure you'll pop back into the discussion when you feel like it. Barry Collins, you're from the district and Dorking, uh, Dorking and district right. line. What, what, have you got complaints or do you think it's all all right? Well, I think, uh, to put it into context, we formed two, just over two years ago because of the appalling timetable introduction in May 1984. Now, since that time, we've built up a relationship with British Rail, and I certainly wouldn't like to say that it's all bad. Not at all. There's a lot of things that we would like to see improved. Timekeeping is one of the major problems. Do they consult you when they change a timetable? Do they consult the passengers on that line, or do they just do it? No, they now consult us, but that brings me on to another point. I believe that to get the proper consultation, we really should have those timetables published publicly a year in advance, which will give all the travelling public the opportunity to comment. I mean, say the last one that I can recall, they completely omitted to consider the needs of certain school children. And then they had to go back and re-alter or rejig the timetable. It is a massive job, though, isn't of it? Of course it is. To, to but be try on. and bring us more in. That's okay. what we're here for. Thank you very much indeed. John Oliver, now I have to get your title right. You are the chairman of the National Association of Rail Passengers. Now, what's that? That's a non-statutory body of volunteers who <coughs> act as an umbrella organisation for a lot of the small commuter groups in and around the South Coast. So it's a pressure group, is it? A pressure group. And why did you feel the need to be formed? Well, we were formed in 1976 when... Uh, fares were going up at 68% in 14 months and figures like that and the travelling public or let's say the commuters the regular season ticket holders uh, just rose up and formed themselves into a national association. Do you find that people that the BR listens to your complaints? They used to. I think it has to be said from our point of view that during the Parker era they were certainly listening to us. They were inviting us to <laughs> meetings, they were discussing things and we were moving toward a situation where we would have had an input into the timetables mm and so on. But in the last 12 months there's been a considerable falling off in that and we are not getting any sort of response from British Rail. I think it says volumes that they aren't here today. Mm. Okay, thank you for that. In a nutshell, what do you all feel about um, we're getting there? What do you think about the slogan? It's the most inappropriate slogan they could have ever chosen. <laughs> thank you. What do you feel about the slogan? It's very patchy. Here and there would be my answer to that. Here and there we're getting there. It reminds me of the red and, and uh, blue dots and the little white ones were the ones they cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What do you feel about British Rail getting there? Well, I think if we look at the fares system that everybody's been talking about, we're trying to get to a simplified system, but British Rail have come up now with a system which is so complicated that not only the passengers can't understand it, but their staff can't understand it. Okay. And that isn't reasonable. All right, thank you very much indeed. Well, well, let's do, finish the slogan off, shall we? Uh, first of all, yeah, you want to say something? I wanted to talk about fares. There is a myth that fares are too dear. But in relation, uh, before the war in 1939, from Paddington to Plymouth, was four pound return, I think, which was, if you like, a driver's basic weekly wage. Mm. Now, the basic weekly wage of a driver now, a driver here could probably tell us, I don't know, 100 pound. Now, the fare to Plymouth is nowhere near 100 pound. Mm. So really, the BR public are getting the fares on the cheap. Getting the fares on the cheap. Would yes. you agree? Where's our driver, friend? <laughs> you support that one? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, we would reckon that if fares are brought down, more people would travel on British Rail. Mm. It's as simple as that. And if you've got more people travelling, you've got more revenue to provide the services, mm. cleaner services, and I think that's what the public really want. Mm. Do you find a driver's rate of pay is 100 Twenty-six eighty-five pence at mm. the present time. Okay, you mentioned cleaners. Everyone seems to be talking about the cleaners, so I'm, I'm very pleased that you're with us. When you join a train to do the cleaning, uh, are you up to full quota? No way. Like what would We're be supposed to be seven to eight coaches, and on Monday, well, this week we've only had two, me and a, and a man. So how do you manage? You just got to do it. Mm. There, there's loads of jobs, but apparently they just will not fill them. Okay. Thank we you. need more. 
Definitely. It's money, and I'm sure we'll come on to that in a minute. James Tully, you also, with, with Len, though, worked on this report. You're the chairman of the Quality Services Subcommittee, of the Central Transport Consultative Committee. Yes. There isn't an awful lot of point, maybe you would agree with me, in people watching on their televisions British Rail is getting there, and then the next morning finding the train doesn't turn up, or people are rude, or they get stuck in the, in the tunnel. Are they getting there? Do you agree with that, having worked on the report? Well, uh, British Rail is very much like the curate's egg, good in part. Some of the services are excellent. The train I came up on this morning, the Yorkshire Pullman, was first class. But the other services are utterly disgraceful. And uh, the timekeeping on some services, some very important services like the North Transpennine service, are appalling. Why should they be so awful? The, uh, timekeeping, that seems to be the most simple thing of all, surely. Well, I would have thought so. They have lots and lots of excuses. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that uh, they haven't really got their act together properly. And uh, the thing that strikes me today, I think it's really quite disgraceful that we have that empty chair here today because... If Mr. O'Brien had been here, he would have heard some compliments and good things about British Rail. And from the people who have assembled here today, I'm sure he would have received, received some very sound advice. Well, why do you feel that, that it is wrong that he isn't yes. here today? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. 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 Yeah. Because a lot of you have said yes. nice things. This gentleman doesn't. Yes, sir. Gentleman with the bow tie. I think we must get the balance right, sir. You see... The person that ought to be sitting there is the Minister of Transport, right. not BR. Okay, because why do you say several that? people have said that the difficulties that BR have got, and don't forget, it's a massive operation. To get to run those trains at all, you need money. And it's the fault of the government, as it is the fault of the government in education, the National Health Service, the whole lot. We've got the sort of service that we deserve. Mm. Wouldn't it be we... nice, though, if we could have put the point about money so that he could have asked It would it? have been nicer yeah. if the Minister of Transport had been there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Where's Jim Abbott? Jim, you're the editor of Modern Railways, which is an independent uh, uh, periodical that you, you hope BR managers are going to buy. This business of finance, has it really... Is it that they haven't got enough money and that's why the service is poor, or are there other reasons for poor service? Um, well, certainly money does come into it. Um, the government has asked BR to cut its subsidy by a third over three years, and they're currently putting into effect plans which are, is uh, bringing that into effect. And um, as a consequence, there, there, are, there are cutbacks, I mean, particularly in staffing, as, as the lady over there has just referred to, um, and also um, within the management itself. Um, they've cut out a whole tier of management, and this, is, this has meant that there's been a fantastic reorganisation inside the structure and people being moved around, uh, most people retiring after 55, so people are moving jobs. And, um other countries get it right, though. I mean, I'm not, I'm not being rude to you, but, you know, it's always excuses, isn't it? It's our railway system. It gets us all to work. Well, I'm, I'm sure if BR was here today, that they would say that uh, things are going to get better. And when, when this reorganisation is complete, um, things will be better and they are also undertaking a great deal of investment at the moment which is currently being put into effect and this means that there's a great deal of engineering work going on which delays trains mm. but when it's finished the service will be better and there are going to be a lot more new trains coming in. When, 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 when? Well for instance we have, we have electrification to Harwich this May, electrification to Hastings this May um, to Leeds in 1989, to Edinburgh. 1989? Well, I'm afraid, yes, that okay. there, there is going to be some disruption on, on that route. Does this placate you all? This is the thing. Does yeah. it placate you all? Uh, the, all right, Not at all. The, the, the main problem, as we see it, is, that, is one of, of accountability. And unfortunately, whilst at the lower level, perhaps, ticket inspectors, guards and so on, there are some very good people who are very sympathetic to the problems mm. that uh, passengers have to put up with. But when you get trains that are constantly late, constantly, every day late, every day late, and as, as a member of my association, when we write and ask why, or maybe even make suggestions as, as to how to get that train on time, even our letters are, just aren't even answered. Mm. Now, three people have now mentioned the era of Peter Parker as if it was a golden era, and I think many people would agree he was always on the television fighting, wasn't he? You always did seem mm. to have an answer. Do you find that, that it has made a difference, having a change at the top? Yes, indeed, and uh, unfortunately it seems to be very retrograde. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Let us go to some BR staff now. I think I can, they can cover me if I'm standing this way. You, sir, are a ticket collector. Yes, oh, I got, it, I got it right. How is morale on the railways? Well, I, it's very, I think it's very bad at this time. I've been on since 1942 myself, and I, I feel I've had enough. Really? 
I don't know. I, I don't want... Has it changed? I mean, most firms, don't they? They say, well, it all filters down from the top. Uh, has that had any effect, the change? Well, I, I, I'm not happy at the top. OK. No, I'm not, not at all. Thank you. Mr Ramsey, you're yes, a driver. I think one of our main problems today is management. We don't really have the railway knowledge to run the, the present job. I use a, a phrase regularly with management that what we're dealing with is calculator management today. Mm. And clearly it's a lack of investment in the industry. It's leading us into the problems that we've got. So it's the, 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 the bosses have come from different arenas. They're yes. not rail, old railway men, in other words. Yes, I think possibly we've taken too much much management out of college and not enough people who have started on the ground floor mm. to come up and understand the working of the job. I well, think that's where we've fallen down. Thanks very much indeed. But still you have to work with this because we all know at ground level there's not an awful lot that you can say. Has it made your job as a guard very difficult? Has it got worse? Put it like that. Yes, every time that there's a deterioration in the service, anybody such as a ticket collector or a guard, somebody who's got some kind of interface with the public, we take it full on. And when you're working for an organisation like BR, which is acting like the tame and willing poodles of the government with their monetarist policies, it's very difficult because the public are given reasons that there are delays, there are cancellations. They don't understand them. They obviously don't have to understand them. What they want is a proper service. Clearly they're not given that service. And when the frontline staff have to bear the brunt of that, mm. it's not surprising yeah. that, they, that their morale sinks to, to such depths. And we passengers aren't always um, babes in arms, are we? We're yeah. not all, always paragons. Anyone turned their back on BR and found alternative <coughs> modes of transport? Yes. The fact of the matter in London, about a third of um, p uh, the richer people have gone to their cars. And I think that the BR have failed to compete with um, the roads for people who can drive in. And, um, of course, this filters all the way down because if BR actually put money into comfort and guaranteed service on the commuter services into London, it would reflect on the whole of the rest of the service. As it is, the rest of the service looks run down and, and tawdry. And I think that this is a, a great mistake because the roads can't actually take everybody mm. into London. We need to have a good rail service for London to prosper. OK, thank you very much. This gentleman's been dying to say um, something. I've come down from Birmingham today. Um, now, I rang up yesterday for a fare as from uh, Birmingham to London, and the price was £30. <laughs> now, they do a cheap away day return, but that doesn't start till 10 o'clock. So my alternative was the coach. £7.50 return, mm. Mm. video on, refreshments, reclined seats, mm. toilet. You know, mm, where's your value for money? With the coaches. Thank you very much. Well, I'd like to come in. I represent pensioners nationally. And I find that all over the country, pensioners are saying they're not buying their half-price rail card because they can go more than half-price on the coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, a £52 one to Swansea is only £16 on the coach. So you're and supporting you're... what Mr Ramsey said, yes. cut the fares and yes, would it's the pensioners bad house. come back? It's definitely bad housekeeping. Government should invest and British Rail should do their money on a different level. Thank you very much for being so succinct. This gentleman up at the back, wait till the mic gets to you. I think that's as far as it'll get. You'll have right. to shout. Can I say that uh, I'm paying almost £1,200 a year for a season ticket. Now that's coming out of my net salary. And with that, I'll still have to pay the mortgage. The coach fares are a quarter, but in mm. fairness to BR, they can do it in half the time. OK. But it's still very, there's a lot of money for a very little return. Thank you very much indeed. Let me go over here. I've been neglecting you all over here. This gentleman here. Yeah. I've had reason to travel down Surrey from Yorkshire to London almost fortnightly now uh, for a number of months. I've travelled in both the train. It's a girlfriend, and I've traveled, I know. <laughs> I've travelled on the coach as well, yes. And... Uh, I've travelled on dirty trains, on vandalised trains, on overcrowded trains. And what I do object to is paying £24 now to stand all the way from Doncaster to London. When, as I say, for £10.50, National Express will take me in absolute comfort. Mm. A hostess brings you drinks to the seat, you watch a video. The coach is impeccable. It's perfectly clean. Okay, well, that's three for the coaches so far. Yes, this lady here. I think that the trains are geared far too much for the business user and the ordinary passenger, the person who isn't on an expense account, isn't taken into account. Mm. I came up from London last October on the, admittedly, the Yorkshire Pullman. Three Pullman carriages with about a dozen people in a couple of prawns in tin hats and two <laughs> carriages full to capacity. People 
standing, sitting in the corridors. I took a petition down the train. I was so angry, A, by the conditions on the train, and B, by the rudeness of the British Rail staff. Pullman Stewart said the guard would probably have me thrown off. And I got 200 odd names on that petition. So there were 200 odd people crowded into those two carriages. Do you feel that the Charm School has made life any better, Barry? Uh, no comment at the moment. I don't think so, but it's early days. Early days. Okay, this lady at the, over here, <coughs> thank yeah. you very much for My that. My gripe is the lack of communication when there are delays. Mm. I made a journey last Sunday, which um, normally takes about an hour and a half. It took me four and a half hours because we were put off the train at Gomshaw and told a coach would meet us, or a bus rather. Um, the bus came in after about nearly half an hour's wait and we had to sit on that bus before he'd move off for an hour and three quarters. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. It does it do any good to complain? This is the thing. Len? Oh, very much so. Yeah. Yes? Uh, you only get the service you're prepared to put up with. And if more people complain, and complain strongly, to British Rail and to my committee and to the local transport users consulted the committees, there's no question that action is taken. And we do have a lot of success. Our biggest problem is that the travelling public tend to be apathetic. Uh, but if they took the procedures which we would recommend, complain to British Rail and to the statutory watchdog, they will get results and successful results. But, I mean, in, in fairness, there's a man in an office. They get, a, they get a piece of paper. You might have missed your plane. You might have been late for your business meeting. How are they going to put your complaint into practice and make it better for you? Well, we look at it that the people who will travel on that train in successive days afterwards have to be remembered. And therefore, if somebody's train is cancelled one day and somebody complains, and, and lots of people complain, then that train will probably run. They do look... Yes. So if they can do it after the complaint, why don't they do it at the beginning? A very good point. So, There's one, one aspect which is often over, overlooked, and that is the one of overcrowding and, and how it affects people in a dangerous situation. Recently, mm -hmm. a train was cancelled, and so everybody had to travel on one train, which is actually what my, my line is planning anyway in May, which is going to be chaotic. I counted 37 people standing in my carriage by the time we got to Charing Cross. It took me three and a half minutes to get out of that train. Now, if we'd had a crash, an accident, a fire, there would have been mayhem. There'd been people suffering very badly. Now, I've invited the powers to be at British Rail to come and travel with me on these trains, and they won't do so. Are they breaking the law by doing that? I mean, Len, do you know about that? I should imagine that um, should there, this situation ever arise, and it sounds quite horrifying, um, that they were, if they're not breaking the law, they'd be very severely criticised. Mm. Because I, I just uh, didn't know about that. Yes, it was an interesting yeah. point. John, yeah. Sarah, quickly. what we're talking about is quality of service. Mm. Um, if I could just come back for a moment to Len's report. Um, we hear about cancellations, but that doesn't tell you about the trains that arrive short so that people mm. are jam-packed into them. It doesn't tell you about the trains that arrive in the morning without any heaters working. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell you about the trains that don't arrive at all and nobody tells you about them. Thank you very much. Why are we not told? Who wants to pick that one up? Why aren't we told? Because that seems to be the simplest thing, to stick your hand on the microphone and say, I'm sorry. We, ha we, have, Who's been, gonna... we have been told in relatively recent months that if the delay is less than about five to ten minutes, that we are specifically not to inform the public. Uh, for the reason for the delay. <laughs> on, this is done on the grounds that the passengers complain, so we are told by management, if there are too many announcements made. There are, of course, also... That, that's not my excuse, that's what the railways say. And there, the, much of the stock, especially outside of the main London areas, apart from high-speed trains, much of the stock still doesn't have public address facilities. You are... Uh, depending upon somebody to walk through the train. It seems and to be basic stuff that's missing, isn't it? it yes. it's really... Can I just uh, let's hear some more from BR people who want anyone to support BR now. Well, I support them because there's a lot of uh, talk about uh, quality of service. Now, when BR or the government give them investment to provide vehicles, you get an industrial relations problem that restricts these vehicles and makes them go on a siding for months. <laughs> Look at the King's Cross out of Suburban Line. They were blacked. Mm -hmm. You get the, yeah. the Bedford, beautiful coaches on the Bedford Line. The, the, the complaints on that line have gone right down. Right. And it's the staff who, who won't operate them. Thank you very it's much. This gentleman I here. I support British Rail for, for, for what they do as far as they go. What I criticise them for is that they're not imaginative enough in the service they do provide. For example, um, 
they recently discovered, and an article in Modern Railways showed that 23% of all travel nationally happens on Sundays. British Rail only takes 7% of it. Here in London, 23% of British Rail stations are closed on a Sunday, so it's absolutely. not surprising they don't. Absolutely. They don't I've more. literally got to finish. Now, can I just finish with you, James, very briefly? Oh, this lady wanted to say something? Um, I'm a senior citizen, senior citizen from Newcastle, and I travel to Liverpool frequently, and I have a £12 ticket with British Rail. They withdrew a lot of the cheap fares over Christmas. I went by coach, and I will never go any other way. They can undercut the time, and their facilities were marvellous. Thank you very much. I think you've got five seconds to say, has this new campaign, which has lasted, I think, six months, isn't it? Uh, is, is it getting there? I don't think it is getting there, but I think if people go on complaining, things will be done, because the lady who complained about the Yorkshire Pullman, following her petition, uh, they put a relief train on on the Friday, and that has eased the position a bit. Thank you very much indeed. I think the message out of that is complain. I'm sorry, that's all I've got time for. Complete change of tack. Now, on Tuesday, if you could think that far ahead, we're looking at sexual relationships. Is it possible? And what's the trick of making love to the same partner happily for all your life? I think it'll be a full house watching that one. Try and join us on Tuesday. In the meantime, thank you for joining us. And what a great shame the board of British Rail felt they couldn't face a daytime audience. Thank you. If you'd like to take part in the daytime audience, the number to ring is 01 484 2345. The lines are open now and will remain open until 4 p.m. In a moment here on TVS.